ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would like to invite the panel speakers, Mr. Maciej Czarnecki, president of Bakaland SA. Good afternoon. Mr. Rafał Gruszeczka, CFO of Maspex Group, Wadowice. Please join us here on stage. And Michał Szafryna, general product manager, the Hoys Poland. Gentlemen, before uh, we start, I would like very much to ask after this uh, whole day and the presentations and discussions that we had, what are your first comments or maybe conclusions? Anything significant, anything um, that uh, you captured from these discussions? After this presentation, uh, that was a moment ago, the topics that we are going to discuss uh, were already mentioned, so uh, I don't know if it's uh, um, the right approach, but uh, I'm really impressed uh, with this intellectual journey um, by the bank, by organizers choosing this topic. Uh, this is amazing. It seems that already today the conference uh, reflects the discussion of the European Green Deal here in Poland, not only uh, in terms of discussion, but also the assimilating of the European Green Deal as for the uh, protection of environment. And I believe that this topic is... Uh, more and more familiar, and we refrain from what we've heard today, what referred to the fears when the document uh, that provides the framework of the European Green Deal, so fork to a farm to fork strategy when this was published on the 20th of May 2020. When we look at the entire reality related to the European Green Deal and uh, farm to fork strategy, we can see that it refers to all aspects of the entire value chain. Professor Hausner said that we can't look only through the value chain and particular elements of this chain, but to a greater extent, this is an ecosystem of food production combining the primary producer, the pro food processor, distributors, and consumers. Uh, if this is so, then we have the most uh, comprehensive way to change everything uh, on a daily basis, change what we are doing on a daily basis, namely food. So there is no surprise that the European Green Deal is really a disturbing. It's uh, making us go outside the comfort zone and we need a new mindset. I would start our discussion between the producers uh, um, food processing companies. We have uh, two perspectives, farm to fork 2030 and 2050. So the, another perspective, this is a milestone for zero emission in the European Union. So gentlemen, it is worth asking a question. What kind of food are we going to have in 10 years' time and 30 years' time? Mr. Marcin Czarnecki, maybe you could start. Thank you for this question. I realized, listening uh, to our predecessors, that I'm not the only one that was inspired by Peter Smith, Schmidt. And uh, I noted down two ideas. I would refer to it um, during the summary. Um, the first one is what you said, we need to think how to feed 
the world, how to provide food for the world, and then you put a dot and there was nothing more about it. You didn't say anything about competitiveness. You didn't say anything about inequalities around the world. So uh, uh, it's worth talking about it at the, at the end. And another thing, you also said that food in Europe is too cheap. Of course, I'm taking it out of the context, but we've heard these words. And for me, for the food producer, Sir, this is really a revolutionary approach. Uh, now, closer to your question, Lucian, I would uh, say that a reply to what kind of food we are going to have in the future, it depends what kind of regions we talk about. I don't believe that we are going to have the same food in Europe that in less developed parts of the world. And probably we would narrow this question uh, whether we talk about the whole world. We will have different food in Africa and different food in Europe because there are different needs and different possibilities. And this is one thing. The second thing I thought is that the future food is going to be exactly what kind of food uh, the consumer accepts and is going to pay for. And I have an example for that. In the world and in Poland, uh, recently, uh, plant-based food uh, has been developing very significantly. And I would like to pay attention to the food that is analogous to food uh, to meat products and dairy products. So business uh, is like that. The uh, plant-based protein is replaced uh, uh, replaces animal-based protein. These are two areas or two businesses that um, already today are worth 2.5 billion euro a year and the value of the market in dairy sector and 2 billion in meat sector. And this is something that has been exploding, it has been growing uh, significant for uh, many years, like 10% on a yearly basis. In Poland, we can see similar trend within the last two years. Uh, during the COVID pandemic, uh, 50 smaller or larger startups were established producing plant-based food uh, that re replaced meat and dairy products. Uh, there are also companies in bakery uh, that uh, in, in uh, food for, for animals. This is something that is growing and uh, is not boosted by the European Green Deal, but by the fact that consumer wants to buy it. They can see the need and they willingly talk about it and they have arguments for it, why they want to have this type of food. So when we look about the food of the future, I thought about plant-based food, but also uh, not repeating what we've heard um, by David. He said a lot of examples as for the future food. I thought about the functional food, uh, uh, so related to our health and fitness needs. I thought about local seasonal food, what can be seen in Poland and around the world. So that was briefly what I wanted to, to say. Referring to what you mentioned before, that we should ask a question, which part of the world the question refers to, uh, taking into account that the European Green Deal is a product of the European Union. We need to remember that the EU wants to develop standards for the world. This is a pursuit to um, grasp uh, this leadership in terms of food safety uh, around uh, the world, taking um, into account in particularly the European Union. So when we are asking about the future in food sector, uh, how do you see that, uh, the Maspects, one of the leading producers? I am uh, in a different uh, part of the food sector. We are not producing dairy or meat products. We have different issues and challenges ahead of us. 
but very briefly, uh, uh, the food is going to be more healthy. We have more uh, conscious consumers. They know what they are looking for in the shops. They read the labels. They understand it perfectly, so they know what they are buying. They know what they are looking for. The question is whether the consumer is going to pay more for better quality product. This is the question that we are going to answer in the future. But answering uh, the question from the MASPEX perspective, sustainable development, European Green Deal, F2F, these are topics that um, were included in our strategy because from the very beginning we looked for innovative solutions in our production, reducing uh, the use of um, media and um, utilities and energy. This is what we've done uh, already, in introducing biogas in uh, waste treatment, returning it to production biogas in this is like 10% these days. So we have now uh, implemented a 30 million program on uh, PV solutions. We have one big farm that we've built. Uh, we haven't uh, thought about financing uh, for that uh, before. We are now building PV uh, systems uh, in uh, our private uh, houses. So this is the con what the consumer can see. Uh, we need to inform consumers about it. And in the future, they should bring positive results and positive response uh, regarding our products. Then I will talk about our cooperation with the farmers, but uh, probably not at this point. Thank you. The horse is in a different place as for the value chain in food production. You uh, have a significant input in what is the core of uh, food production, so meat, uh, poultry, so what is your contribution to the food of the future? Perhaps within the next, uh, not within the next 10 years, but maybe 30 years, you are going to lose significant part of your income because the consumption of meat is, is uh, uh, going down. But uh, yes, indeed, but globally, um, it's a lot of uh, opportunities for development. Uh, during this previous presentation, very inspiring, I caught two things for me, thinking out of the box. This is something that is a, a rule for us. For many years, we want to stay ahead of the situation on the market, so we look for from different perspectives, not only from the um, fodder, but meat production. But we are trying to look for solutions that are not yet available on the market. So I believe uh, this is um, similar to what to, to the uh, what, what the startups are showing us these days. I agree with my predecessors. Uh, food must be safe. This is crucial. In David's presentation, I also uh, heard that so we are 100% uh, sure that we need to meet the expectations of our consumers. We need to follow their uh, uh, demands. And this is where we are going. And another thing I uh, remember in the alternative products, let's say it, uh, we have a lot of dairy products, a lot of uh, um, pork products, but only a few of dairy, uh, of poultry products. So uh, for us, as the big producer in poultry, this is a good news. This is not uh, a coincidence, the lowest emission uh, of uh, CO2. So uh, uh, in the lab, uh, who uh, want to do it, uh, so uh, it it might not be uh, so so uh, interesting. Uh, so significant uh, growth, uh, lower levels of the fodder. So I think this uh, this is a good situation in terms of this poultry sector. So uh, uh, I believe that. Uh, Poultry is uh, safe uh, in uh, terms of uh, 
the next uh, dozens of years. So this is going to be the type of meat uh, willingly consumed by uh, the customers. We uh, can't forget uh, the quality of the protein with, with a good amount of fat and uh, very easy to uh, prepare on a daily basis. So um, I believe that it is going to change a little bit in terms of 10 years and then uh, long term uh, in a very wealthy Europe. We are going to look for new solutions. We can see uh, uh, the, the quality of different uh, poultry uh, food uh, living free outside. So um, we will uh, look at this profitability and efficiency. We can also refer to the definition that we know very well these days. Uh, we uh, know that the sustainable development um, means a balance between the current needs on a global scale and the future needs of uh, next generations. I believe that at some point the paradigm of development based on uh, profit must be reviewed and uh, we need this regeneration of this entire approach to business. It is addressing the need to to have uh, the resources for the future. Let's look at the water, uh, everything related to energy. When we look at the increase of the cost of such energy, it all makes us think that this food for the future must be healthy on, and must uh, must be must, must contribute to our uh, better health and better fitness and on the other hand it is also going to influence the prices so how to approach this uh, situation and this uh, green uh, deal assumptions to produce organic food that is going to be um um, that is going to have a good price for the consumer. So I represent Bacaland company and all the dried fruit and nuts. This is a core of our activity. We buy nuts all over the world. Uh, we buy nuts in the United States and in California. Uh, they have the best nuts. And I was surprised uh, that half of uh, our producers of almonds from California these are the producers uh, who produce their almonds without manure, without, uh, in a circular uh, economy. And at the same time, these are the best almonds in the world. And at the same time, they cost the same, or more or less the same, as almonds from other parts of the world. So suddenly it turns out this is possible. Somebody is doing that. That This is an example that it, it is possible that we can produce uh, food uh, in line with the European Green Deal provisions and be also price-wise uh, com competitive in terms of prices. It's also about sourcing raw material. I believe it's something really important. The question is whether in the recent years, well, we've heard a lot that we need to safeguard the present sources of raw material. So how do you cope with it? And how do you combine it with the Green Deal uh, demands? In Mazdek, we have taken over Timbark, a fruit processing industry in 1994, and ever since we've been in touch with the farmers. In the beginning, not really deep, just to purchase uh, raw material and uh, manufacture simple. Uh, product and sell it and uh, Kubush has become a national brand and we had to make decision what to do with the raw material. Carrot, apple, 
and we were searching for suppliers in the Masuria and the carrots and how to convince the farmers so that all of a sudden we tell them, okay, you have 10 hectares of your field, try carrot on all of it and we'll buy it from you. It was 1994. You may imagine how much they were surprised. No trust to us at all. And for years now, we have built a huge, like 2,000 uh, trusted business partner. We don't call them farmers. They are business partners. We cooperate very closely with them. They develop together with us. When we grow, they grow as well. They they trust us, which is, and then as a result, we have a close cooperation across um, across uh, the year, not only in spring when they receive the seeds, and then when we buy out, uh, when we buy carrot in September. Now we are in touch with them across the year, 2,000 people in Poland. We take care so that the biggest part of our farmers should be located really close to uh, our plant. It's about cutting the cost of transport and also we limit um, the um, carbon footprint. And the farmers, they grow together with us. We have created, we, we help them to set up producer groups and they received uh, now money from the EU. We helped them to uh, submit the application because we wanted them to buy additional equipment. All the time we meet, we explain to them all the novelties in technology. We cooperate at different places. Like now, we have two major programs with the National Research Center. One is about tomato and the other, the Durum wet in Poland. And we have some courageous farmers who followed us, and now they have the experimental crops. So it's not a farmer whom we need only in September. We know exactly what we are going to receive, what kind of quality, what kind of volumes you have schedules, time schedules, and all the cooperation is really very well structured. Five or six years ago, it was in 2015, we have taken over Agros company. We have now a new group of producers for cucumber and tomato. It's a group uh, which we had to learn how to work with. We've been cooperating for six years now with no problems. And we increase our orders all the time. So on the one hand, you are scaling up your business and also today we've heard it several times that the resources are not are limited and uh, i understand that you safeguard growing needs on raw material and the mass specs, uh, it's a lot of expenditure on um, investment, your capex, if I remember well. It's around 700 million, right? Yeah, I've read it. It's a little bit more than that. But yeah, we are also proud with this amount. What kind of your capex? may be consumed by everything which is in line with the Green Deal and with the from field to fork strategy. All the expenditures are about just that. The major part was spent in 2007-2019. When we increased our production capacity, we built new production halls, we added production lines, we built three new logistics centers and high storage warehouses in Lublin, Olsztynek and Łowicz. These are the centers which are closer to our um, to our customers. We thus we uh, reduce emissions from transport. 
In the case of production halls, well, again, uh, we have installed photovoltaic installation on the roofs. And the equipment we buy, these are modern technological lines, newest uh, state-of-the-art solutions. We don't buy old things. Everything is new, tested. Very often we participate in joint development plans. Well, if it happens that one of the suppliers will give us a new production line because they want to test something. They can't do it uh, at large scale by themselves, so they are doing it with us, which means that jointly we'll build up machines which are tailor-made for us. They reduce consumption of energy and other media. Like recently, we've decided that Inuovich will uh, expand the food processing plant for tomato. We want to increase our capacity between two and three times, while an average uh, consumption of uh, water per processed food will be halved. So each project that we do, it will bring us better effectiveness and efficiency. And all the environmental aspects connected with sustainable development, they are then translated into good business um, aspects. I want to add something more. When we're discussing what kind of food we are going to have, well, we talk that it's, it should be healthy and what the consumers would like. It has to be tasty as well, because we remember Matrix where Neo, Neo was uh, taken away from the machines and when he came around and wanted to have breakfast, we saw what he was served. So when I was sitting in the movies and um, had my popcorn and drinking healthy Coca-Cola, I didn't like it at all. So I hope we're not heading in this direction. One comment. Previously, during this meeting, we heard that someone said that optimization of the production costs, looking for better effectiveness, is against the development. We need to invest money to have what we want to have from the Green Deal. I don't believe this is the case. And what you have said now, it means that many companies, both in Poland and worldwide, invest money to have better productivity, better efficiency, but also these projects, they get translated into environmental protection. And we have plenty of examples like that in Poland and elsewhere, like investment in cogeneration, in reverse osmosis. And also, I see here in the room two of my colleagues from Bongram Company, and we worked together like 10 years ago. I remember it's nice to see you again. While 10 plus years ago, what we uh, came uh, to in my companies in Poland, we wanted to we wanted to measure how many protein we have in the wastewater, and it turned out that it's a lot of it, and protein and uh, and uh, grease, this is what you buy. Fat, it is what you buy to uh, to um, to produce uh, cheese. And then we we it turned out that we are losing protein in the production line. And at the end of this, we have identified places where the protein was taken away, and also wastewater uh, got better. And it it was joined hand in hand. It's not in contradiction. No, exactly. And uh, also what we heard today in the presentation of uh, Mr. Urbaniak, the thing about that it does not have, we don't need to, to uh, overreact uh, and the, uh, but overreact and be afraid of the future. No, short round, no gentlemen. How? Can you or your company can win the future together with the Green Deal? Well, things about the business model, the product, and the operational activity. I'll begin with one very simple example because my colleagues have said everything, but one simple thing 
For two years now, we haven't had any paper documents. All the contracts or all papers, everything is electronic. And believe me, in the beginning, it was uh, it was uh, really a war with the uh, with our suppliers. They didn't like it, but COVID helped us to have control over it because they said, "Yeah, okay, that's that's great. Everything is electronic." But these are small steps, really, which then adds up add up to be more environment friendly without having to cut hectares of uh, of forests. My com our company in 2019 joined an agreement of the uh, food, um, feed industry. Not many companies in Poland joined it. We are the only one from Poland. And in 2025, we'll be using soya, which is safe. I mean, it has not had impact on Amazon or on the rainforest. And people who were working with it, they were there were no child labor. So it's a sum of small steps. In the beginning, it, it costs. We said several times about it, but at the end of the day, someone acknowledges it and it has positive impact on our image. One more thing I want to say. There are many resources which you have mentioned. You mentioned water. So poultry is good uh, meat because we don't use that much water. We are not aware about how little water we have in Europe. We tend to believe that we have shortage of water in Africa. Only no, Europe is also suffering from shortage of water. And this is yet another thing which we need to remember about. And this is important. And uh, it should change our attitude and mindset. We try to think a little bit ahead. We try to be ahead of the market. So for seven years or eight years now, we've been producing our poultry feed without phosphorate. Well, that enzy enzymes which help us doing that. But I remember when I was a product manager, I decided to choose this solution. Then many our competitors would say to our customers, no, we are, you know, uh, this feed will no, be no good. But we said, yeah, it, it's there, but it's in a different form. And also we have very positive impact on the environment because there is no emission. We are emission free. So this is what thinking ahead is about. And the Green Deal attitude is that if you go a little bit quicker, if you are looking for solutions which are better to all of us, then at the end of the day, the customers will appreciate it and want to work with you. And also you contribute significantly, which has been postulated in the green uh, field, F2F, to the welfare of the animals, as feeding the animal has impact on how they feel. It is scientifically researched. Oh yes, I remember 17 years old, uh, years ago, I was working in a com company and uh, I remember we were feeding uh, birds uh, who were eating and who were growing really fast and now they and they ate a lot but now what's most important we managed to limit the level of protein which we feed the animal so there is less emission of um, ammonium so as the meat sector we are really very effective and the uh, green deal assumptions is something which we like a lot. It's a great example. Simhabas, which changed Israel into blooming gardens, and it used to be a desert, a hero today in, this, in Israel. He uh, invented that you may have better effects by limitation. Concluding, a provocative question to you. What kind of uncertainty the Green Deal brings along and the from farm to fork strategy, specifically in the context of what's about 
different types of discussions that such ambitious, extremely ambitious targets may result in re complete rebuilding of the business models. Are we ready in such a short time perspective? Perhaps, uh, Martin, you will start. Yes, gladly. I have one more comment. I've heard from uh, Mr. Urbaniak that money does not bring happiness. And I must say that from uh, the one of the most important uh, bankers, uh, this means it was really worth coming here for the conference. Why am I thinking about it? Because um, referring to what I said at the very beginning, uh, we talked very little about competitiveness, about imbalance in the world. We can't refrain uh, this uh, uh, from politics in our discussion. It also um, uh, appeared uh, here. Mr. Urbaniak also mentioned it a little bit. But I think that the discussion about the European Green Deal and the threats or challenges also refers to the European Union and the strength of the European Union, but it also refers to the um, position of Poland in the European Union. This is the discussion that we've been having in Poland these days. I agree 100% with uh, the statement that was said before that this is a new paradigm for uh, the economic development. This is the only path to follow. And we can't achieve um, what we are saying today without money, without financial resources. Um, the data of financial figures I have in mind I think Mr. Schmidt said about 60 billion euro of taxes paid by taxpayers in the European Union on a yearly basis, and I have 3.5 billion euro uh, spent by the European Union on saving uh, the banking system in Europe when the system was uh, in a very bad condition. And in 2020, the European Commission declared uh, four times less billion euro for the program that we are talking about today. Is this serious? Whether this is sufficient resources for, this, uh, for these um, great goals? Uh, Rafał, I believe this is also your question how these goals in uh, the Green Deal and in the strategy are um, defined, whether we need to have a certain uh, adaptation or reflection without internal regulations, uh, that would not be possible. It shows that this is a system-based change, not a point-based change. Yes, exactly so. The goals are very ambitious also in our part when we talk about the reduction of pesticides and fertilizers. So the agriculture sector must meet these, these uh, requirements. This is not easy, but this is uh, something that we as a group uh, discussed that already with our farmers. We've been producing food also for children, so we apply significant regimes within our suppliers and we control the crops, what they use, what kind of fertilizers, what kind of pesticides, so it's all significantly scrutinized. And uh, we've been uh, organizing meetings and trainings. Uh, we've been explaining what can be done better. Uh, we uh, learn everything together. Um, the question is whether we have enough time until 2030 to meet these goals. In my opinion, I believe that uh, whether we have significant resources to change technologies in the Polish agricultural sector, which is necessary uh, through uh, the entire subsidies, 
uh, from the European Union and the technological level of agriculture was uh, significantly improved, but this is not sufficient. We could see that. We could see the new technologies that uh, can be uh, applied in the Polish agricultural sector. I haven't seen these harvesters in Poland. So everything is ahead of us. The question is whether we have sufficient resources. So how the distribution system is going to look like, uh, or the system of uh, improving the competence, qualification skills of our farmers, whether we as producers are the only link that must uh, take part in these activities, I don't know. Perhaps. Uh, we need um, a significant role of the state here so that the awareness uh, among the farmers and producers is much higher. We are going to contribute, uh, certainly, but the support of the state is necessary. Ten seconds for Rafał. For Michał, okay. I am more optimist. Uh, well, as a rule, I think there is one method that is going to uh, help us do it. It's partnership. If we do it alone, it's going to be difficult. If we do it together, we will manage. So I believe with this statement, we should conclude our panel and summarize it. So if we were the politicians, we would leave Sopot today with a long document entitled Sopot Agreement on building and implementing and assimilating the European Green Deal and Farm to Fork strategy in Poland, um, dealing with all the um, fears or uh, and hopes and challenges that are ahead of us and ahead of our companies. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank our panels.